Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. 
Coming to the close of Book 10, Canto 4, which has been uh, keeping us fascinated for several weeks now. Hmm. So, um, at the top of line 662, Page 662. Death again challenges savitri. Sorry? Did you not finish last time with verse 75? Um, you mean Canto 5? Uh, now we're coming to the end of okay. book 10, Canto 4. That's what we're... Uh, perhaps we will read that this week. This is still this conversation going on between Savitri and death. And the last thing he has told her is that the best thing she can do is to give up all hope of returning to earth with living Satyavan. The best thing she can do is to return and live her own life as best she can. Hmm? So, line 539. Leave then thy dead, O Savitri, and live. That's... Um, 
That's on page 656. Hmm. Well, we obviously have different editions and different books. Hmm? Yeah. Leave then thy dead, O Savitri, and live. It's a few lines below the number, page 656. That's his advice to her. To return to life, give up all hope of saving Satyavan, leave then thy dead, O Savitri, and live. The woman answered to the mighty shade, the mighty shadow. And as she spoke, mortality disappeared. All her human characteristics. Her goddess self grew visible in her eyes. Light came, a dream of heaven, into her face. And this is what she tells him. O death, thou too art God, and yet not he, but only his own black shadow on his path. As leaving the night, he takes the upward way and drags with him its clinging, inconscient force, the force of death's shadow. Of God unconscious, thou art the dark head. Of his ignorance, thou art the impenitent sign. Of its vast, tenebrous womb, the natural child. On his immortality, the sinister bar. All contraries are aspects of God's face. The many are the innumerable one. The one carries the multitude in his breast. He is the impersonal inscrutable soul. He is the one infinite person seeing his world. The silence bears the eternal's great dumb seal. His light inspires the eternal word. He is the immobile's deep and deathless hush. It's white and signless blank negating calm. Yet stands the creator self the Almighty Lord, and watches his will done by the forms of gods, and the desire that goads half-conscious man, and the reluctant and unseeing night. These wide divine extremes, these inverse powers, are the right and left side 
of the body of God. Existence balanced twixt two mighty arms confronts the mind with unsolved abysms of thought. Darkness below, a fathomless light above, in light are joined, but sundered by severing mind, stand face to face, opposite, inseparable, two contraries needed for his great world task, two poles whose currents wake the immense world force. In the stupendous secrecy of his self, <laughs> above the world brooding with equal wings, he is both in one, beginningless, without end, transcending both, he enters the absolute. His being is a mystery beyond mind. His ways bewilder mortal ignorance. The finite in its little sections parked, amazed, credits not God's audacity who dares to be the unimagined all and see and act as might one infinite. Against human reason, this is his offense, being known to be forever unknowable, to be all and yet transcend the mystic whole. Absolute to lodge in a relative world of time. Eternal and all-knowing to suffer birth. Omnipotent to sport with chance and fate. Spirit, yet to be matter and the void. Illimitable, beyond form or name, to dwell within a body, one and supreme, to be animal, and human and divine. A still deep sea, he laughs in rolling waves. Universal he is all, transcendent none. To man's righteousness, this is his cosmic crime. Almighty, beyond good and evil to dwell, leaving the good to their fate in a wicked world and evil to reign in this enormous scene. Will you read on, Joan? Sure. All opposition seems 
and strife and chance, an aimless labor with but scanty sense, two eyes that see apart and miss the whole, the surface men scan, the depths refuse their search, a hybrid mystery challenges the view, or a discouraging sordid miracle. Yet in the exact inconscient of stark conceit, in the casual error of the world's ignorance, a plan, a hidden intelligence is glimpsed. There is a purpose in each stumble and fall. Nature's most careless lolling is a pause, preparing some forward step, some deep result. Ingenious notes plugged into a motive score. These million discords dot the more harmonious theme of the evolution's huge orchestral dance. A truth supreme has forced the world to be. It has wrapped itself in matter, as in a shroud. A shroud of death, a shroud of ignorance. It compelled the suns to burn through silent space. Flame signs of its uncomprehended thought in a wide brooding ether's formless news. It made of knowledge a veiled and struggling light, of being a substance nation, dense and dumb, of bliss the beauty of an insentient world. In finite things, the conscious infinite dwells. Involved, it sleeps in matter's helpless trance. It rules the world from its sleeping, senseless void. Dreaming, it throws out mind and heart and soul. To labor crippled, bound on the hard earth. A broken hole, it works through scattered forms. <clears throat> its gleaming charts are wisdom diamond thoughts. Its shadowy reflex our ignorance. It starts from the mute mass in countless jets. It fashions a being out of brain and nerve, a sentient creature from its pleasures and pangs. A pack of feelings obscure, a dot of sense survives a while answering the shocks of life. Then, crushed or its force spent, leaves the dead form, leaves the huge inner universe in which it lived, an insignificant, unconsidered guest. <clears throat> but the soul grows concealed within its heart. It gives to the body its strength and magnificence. It follows aims in an ignorant, aimless world. It lends significance to earth meaningless life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Tuan?
satisfies his little longings like the bees. He pours on life's book with student arms. Out of this tangle of intellect and sense, out of the narrow scope of finite thought, at last he wakes into spiritual mind. A high liberty begins <coughs> and luminous room. He glimpses eternity, touches the infinite. He meets the gods in great and sudden hours. He feels the universe as his larger self, makes space and time his opportunity to join the heights and depths of being in life. In the heart's cave, speak secretly with God. But these are touches and high moments live. Fragments of fluid supreme have lived his soul. Has lived his soul. Reflections of the sun in water still. A few have there the last supreme ascent and break through bars of blinding light above, and feel a brief around of mighty therapy, receive a vast being's message, and bark in its immense intuitive way. Our solid mind, our radiant altitudes, exposed to the luster of infinity, outscouts and dependencies of the house of truth, that raise the states of mind and measures. Then man can visit, but then he cannot live. The cosmic thought spreads out its vestitudes. Its smallest parts are here philosophies, challenging with their detailed dimension, each figuring an omniscient scheme of things. But higher still can climb the ascending light. There are vast visions and eternal sounds, oceans of an immortal luminousness, flame hills salt in heaven with their peaks. There, dwelling on, becomes a blaze of sight. The burning head of visions leads the mind. Thought trails behind it its long torn tail. The heart glows and illuminate and seer, and sends his kind of into identity. A high flight climbs to a deepest view in the wide opening of his neighbor's car, into its lightning's range in the bright pack, hunting all hidden truths out of their lives. Its fiery edge of seeing absolute cleaves into locked unknown retreats of self, rummages the sky recesses of the brain, lights up the occult channels of the heart. Its still point ictus of discovery pressed on the top of pain, this gleam of form, steps bare to secret soul of all that is. Thought there as revelation sunbright eyes, the word, the mind and its mighty voice, and the truth's inmost cabin of privacy, and tears away the veil from God of life. Then stretch the boundless, finite's last expanse, the cosmic empire of the over mind, time's above a state bordering eternity, too vast for the experience of human soul. All here gathers beneath one golden sky. The powers that build the, cos the cosmos station take in its house of infinite possibility. Each god from there builds his own nature's world. Ideas are felons like a group of suns, each marshalling his company of ways. Four crowds in masses seized by one of the God. All time is one body, space a single room. Then 
is the Godhead's universe of gates, and then the boundaries of the immortal mind. The line that parts and joins the hemispheres closes in on the lane of the dance, takes an eternity from the toil of time. In a glorious kingdom of eternal life, all rule, rule by none, the truth supreme, omnipotent, omniscient and alone, in a golden culture, keeps her measureless house. In its corridor, she hears the threat that comes out of the unmanifest, never to return, till the unknown is known and seen by men. Above the stretch and blaze of cosmic sight, above the silence of the world who thought, founders create of immortal forms, names in this Europe with the name divine, transcending time's hours, transcending timelessness, the mighty mother sits in lucid calm and holds the eternal child upon the knee. Attending the day when he shall speak to faith. There is the image of our future soul. There is the sun for which all darkness waits. There is the imperishable harmony. The world's contradictions climb to her and are one. There is the truth of which the world's truths are shreds. The light of which the world's ignorance is the shade. Till truth draws back the shade that it has cast. The love our hearts call down to heal our strife. The bliss for which the world's erect shows the earth. <clears throat> Thence comes the glory sometimes seen on earth. The visits of God and to the human soul. The beauty and the dream on nature's face. Then the perfection born from eternity calls to it the perfection born in time. The truth of God surprising human life. The image of God overtaking finite shapes. Then in a world of everlasting light. In the radiance, the immortal supermind. Truth who hides here her head in mystery, her riddle being by reason impossible in the stark structure of material form. He enigmaed lives, unmasked her face, and there is nature and the common law of things. Then, in the body made of spirit stuff, the heart stone of the ever living fire, action translates the movements of the soul. Thought steps infallible and absolute, and life is a continual worship right, a sacrifice of rapture to the world. The cosmic vision, the spiritual sense, feels all the infinite lost in finite form, and seen through a quivering ecstasy of life. This comes the bright face of the goddess. In the truth of a moment, in a moment's soul, can sit the harmony wine of eternity. A spirit who is no one and innumerable, the one mystic infinite person of this world, multiplies his myriad personality. On all his body seals, his divinity stands and sits in each immortal and union. The immortal stands behind each day the end, the background of the movement and the sea, upholding creation on its mind and calm, and shapes from the immutable status pose. The timeless books are from the German hours. The ineffable puts on a robe of speech, where all its words are woven like magic threads, moving with beauty, inspiring with a grief, and every thought except its destined place, recorded in the memory of the
the world should be vast and it does uh, fit far into the ideal and circumstances. Its substance, the pure gold and the sand, that shaped into vessels for the spirit's use. Its gold becomes the wine jar and the vase. On there is a supreme epiphany. The all wonderful makes a marvel of each event. The all beautiful is a miracle in each shape. The all blissful smites with rapture as the heart stops. The pure celestial joy is the use of sins. Each being there is a member of the self. A portion of the million thought of. A claim to the timeless youth. The main, the many sweetness, the joy of difference, adds with the intimacy of the one. Mm. Thank you. So I think that is the end of what Savitri has to say. <laughs> mm. The truth supreme, hmm? vast and impersonal, fits faultlessly the hour and circumstance. So it's not by chance or uh, random. Everything in fact is organized perfectly even in the truth of the moment. Hmm? The truth supreme, vast and impersonal, not limited by any individual individuality, faultlessly fits the hour and circumstance for each thing to happen. That truth supreme is a substance, a pure gold, ever the same. But that pure gold gets shaped into vessels, into containers for the spirit's use. Its gold, the gold of the truth, becomes, it can become uh, the wine to, the jar to contain the wine that brings divine ecstasy, or a vase where we can place a perfect flower. Hmm? The substance doesn't change. It may get used for many different purposes. Um, Devin, would you go on? Hmm? All there is a supreme epiphany. image 
be remade and earthly life become the life divine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then death, the last time answered Savitri. If truth supreme transcends her shadow here, severed by knowledge and the claiming was, what bridge can cross the gulf that she has left between her and the dream world she has made? Or who could go to bring her down to men and persuade to tread the harsh blow with wounded feet, leaving her unapproachable glory and bliss, wasting her splendor on pale earthly air? Is thy that strength for beauty of mortal limbs, O soul who flutterest to escape my net? Who then art thou hiding in human guise? Thy voice carries the sound of infinity. Knowledge is with thee. Truth speaks through thy words. The light of things beyond shine in, shines in thy eyes. But where is thy strength to conquer time and death? Hast thou God's force to build heaven's values here? For truth and knowledge are an idle dream if knowledge brings not power to change the world, if might comes not to give to truth her right. A blind force, not truth, has made this ignorant world. A blind force, not truth, orders the lives of men. By power, not light, the great gods rule the world. Power is the arm of God, the seal of fate. O human claimant to immortality, reveal thy power, lay bare thy spirit's force, then will I give back to thee Satyavan. Or, if the mighty mother is with thee, show me her face that I may worship her. Let deathless eyes look into the eyes of death, an imperishable force touching blue things transform earth's death into immortal life. Then can thy dead return to thee and live. The prostrate earth perhaps shall lift her gaze and feel near her the secret body of God and love and joy overtake feeling time. Mm. So this is the last challenge. Hmm? Anandi, you would like to read? This Anandi.
needed no more the income since free. A mighty transformation came of her, a halo of the indwelling deity. The immortal's last had that had lit her face and tempted its radiance in her body's house. Overflowing made the air a luminous sea. In a flaming moment of apocalypse, the incarnation thrashed aside its veil. A little figure in infinity, yet stood and seemed the eternal's very house, as if the world's center was her very soul, and all wide space was but its outer world. A curve of the calm order of far heaven, descending into earth's humility, her forehead span vaulted the omniscient gaze. Her eyes were two stars that watched the universe. The power that from her beams summit reigned, the presence chambered in lotus secrecy came down and held the center in her brow, where the mind's lord in his control room sits, there throned on concentration's latent seat. He opens that third mysterious eye in man, the unseen eye that looks at the unseen. When light with a golden ecstasy fills his brain, and the eternal wisdom drives his choice, and the eternal will seizes the mortal's will. It stirred in the lotus of her throat of song, and in her speech throbbed the immortal world. Her life sounded with the steps of the world's soul, moving in harmony with the cosmic soul. As the light God's sun into the mystic cave, where hides his light from the pursuing gods, it glides into the lotus of our heart and woke in it the force that alters fate. It poured into her labels lotus steps, lodged in a little life nature's narrow home and the body's longings grew heaven rapture's flower and made design a pure celestial flame, broke into the cave where coiled world energy sleeps and smoked the southern hooded serpent force that blazing towered and clasped the world itself above, joined matter's darkness to the spirit's hush and filled earth's acts with the spirit's silent power. Thus changed, she waited for the world to speak. Eternity looked into the eyes of death, and darkness saw God's living reality. Yes, please. Will you read? And then a voice was heard that seemed in the stillness itself. For the low calm utterance of infinity, Heaven speaks to the silence in the heart of sleep. I hail thee, Almighty and victorious. Though gravity struck, then a voice was heard that seemed the stillness itself. For the low calm utterance of infinity, 
when it speaks to the silence of the heart of sleep. I hail thee, almighty and victorious heaven, though grandiose darkness of the deep, the void that makes room for all to be, hunger that knows to be universe, consuming the cold reverence of the sense, and feeds, feeds the whole world with thy draws of fire, waster of the energy that has made the stars, in conscience carrier of the seeds of thought, nations in which all knowledge sleeps and dawned, and slowly emerges in its hollow breast, hollow breast, wearing the mind's mask of pride and ignorance. Though not my shadow can my instrument, I have given thee thy awful shape of dread, and thy sharp sword of terror and grief and pain, to force the soul of man to struggle for life. On the gravity of his not conscious things, though part his spur to greatness in his words, the whip to his yearning for eternal bliss, his pertinent need of immortality. Live death the while, be still my instrument. One day, men too shall, shall know their better as of silence and the proving peace of God, and great obedience to eternal law. And the calm and flexible pity in thy gaze, but now, O time is mightiness, stand aside and leave the path of my incarnations. Relieve the wicked world from my black mass. Release the soul of the world from its suffering. Free from the touch of pain and ignorance, that he may stand the master of life and fate. Man's representative in the house of God, the maid of wisdom and the spouse of life, the eternal virtue of the eternal world. She spoke, death unconvinced, resisted still. Although we knew, refusing still to know, although we saw refusing still to see, unshakable he stood claiming his heart. His spirit bound, his will obeyed the rules, the law, of his own nature binding in the universe. The two opposed each other face to face, his being like the, the huge form of darkness down. Around in her light grew an ocean's siege, the while the shape survived, defied them, assailing in front, oppressing from above, a concrete mass of conscious power, he bore the, the tyranny of her divine desire. The pressure of intolerable force swayed on his unbowed head and stubborn breast. Light, like the burning tongue, licked up his thoughts. Light was a luminous torture in his heart. Light caused a splendid agony through his nerves. His darkness muttered, perishing in her veins. Her mastering word commanded every evening, and left her no room for this enormous wound that seemed pushed out into some helpless space and could no more re-enter, but left him quiet. <clears throat> he called it tonight, but she fell shudder shuddering back. He called to hell, but suddenly it returned. He turned to the conscient for support, for which he was born, his vast sustaining self. It threw him back towards boundless vacancy, as if by himself to swallow the up himself. He called to his strength, but it refused his call. His body was eaten by life, his spirit devoured. At last he knew he inevitably, and left crumpling the shape that he had worn, 
abandoning hope to make men so history, and force to be mortal the important, the immortal spirit. A found the plant that shunned her dreaded touch, and refuge took in the retreating wind. In the dream twilight of that simple world, the dire universal shadow disappeared, and vanishing into the void of which it came. As if deprived of its original cause, the twilight realm starts fading from their souls, and suffer on its savagery forever. The magnificent spirit between those figures was mute, invisible, and translucent form in the long black moment spots. Nothing to move. All waited on the unknown. It's good to the world. Thank you. So that's where we'll stop for today. Ahead of us is uh, Canto 11 with all its marvels. Mm. This is uh, the Supreme Divine Mother speaking through Savitri. She takes on Savitri's form. Yes, isn't that interesting? Yes. Yes. She's speaking to death and about the nature of death, yes. So she says, live death a while. You, I, I don't want you to stop your work. Hmm? Be still my instrument because one day even human beings will become aware of what you really are, you the God of death your fathomless heart of silence. And what you offer is brooding peace of night and grave obedience to eternal law. We would like to change the law of death, no? but there's obviously a use in it. No? So she says, I'm not asking you to give up your, your nature, but for now stand aside. Leave the path of my incarnate force, that is Savitri, the incarnate force of the Supreme Divine Mother. So now you can take off this black mask and release the soul of the world called Satyavan. Set him free from your shadow of death. Mm. What is brooding? Brooding. Brooding is what mother hens do, or mother birds. They uh, they uh, lay their eggs and keep them in a nice warm, cozy nest. They sit on them, they don't move. They, like they protect them. Hmm? Like, uh, like a hen? Like a hen, yes, exactly. The mother hen. She, she lays her eggs and then she broods on them. She makes sure they're in a nice, warm, protected place. And she sits there and she gives them the warmth of her body until it's time for the eggs to hatch. 
So that's the, so you can say, the basic meaning of the word brooding. Uh, hens, particularly, when they get broody, they don't want to eat or to drink, and they won't let you near their nest. They will come and peck at you. Um, people, too, can become broody when they are... Um, <laughs> when they're concentrating on something, you know, perhaps on bringing something, some new creation out. Mm. But here the whole universe is brooding. Mm. Re-energized, yeah. Re-energized and comes back. Yes. Oh. Yes. Mm. So that's one of the functions of death. Mm. What is this eternal law uh, specifically? Sorry? The eternal law. The eternal law, yes. I think it's the law of truth, it's the law of the cosmos. Human beings have a different law or they don't always agree with the eternal law. They would like it to be different. It's interesting the way that uh, the, the words are put here. Oh, the mother speaks to oh, Savitri in the voice of the mother, in the form of the mother, um, says, live death a while, continue to be my instrument, to do my work. And one day, human beings will understand you. No? One day, man too, shall know by fathomless heart the depths of your compassion and your silence and that brooding peace of night which the God of death can give and the calm inflexible pity in thy gaze he is not ruthless he is just doing his cosmic work She says, I hail thee, almighty and victorious death. No? You are the... Well, you have work. No? What does it say? It says, of God unconscious, mm. of God yes. of his ignorance, God of his penitence. Yes. And I have given thee thy awful shape, she says, and your sharp sword. To force the soul of man to struggle for light on the brevity of the shortness of his half-conscious days. You, death, are man's spur 
driving him to achieve greatness in his works. And you give him that poignant need of immortality. Longing for immortality, which is so creative in human humanity. So she says you have to let stand aside and release the soul of the world called Satyavan. I think that's the first place he's re referred to in this way. It, it comes again in, uh, in Canto 11. The soul of the world called Satyavan. Man's representative in the house of God. He is the mate of wisdom. Savitri represents wisdom and light. He, Satyavan, is the eternal bridegroom of the eternal bride. There's still quite a lot to come. All of uh, Canto 11, Book 12. Thanks to Sri Oh, he is our power. 